we want God to bless us. Is that all right? And we want to bless God. Dear gracious and kind Father, we come to you right now. We thank you, Father God, for this day. This is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We humble ourselves, dear God, realizing that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. We want to say thank you, God, for being in the house of God. One more time, we come to worship you in the beauty of holiness. Heavenly Father, we ask you to just rain down upon us on this morning. Send a word that will strengthen us. Send a word that will challenge us. Send the word that would change us, causing us to be conformed to the image of your son. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the man of God. Thank you for Elder Autry, Lord God, that's going to be bringing forth your word on this morning. We ask you to strengthen him, Lord God. Word, word his mouth, Father God. Give him what to speak on this morning. Father God, we pray right now that you would just have your way in this service on today. Heavenly Father, we want to be more like Jesus. We want to talk more like Jesus, Lord God. We want to love more like Jesus. We want to be conformed to the image of your son. We thank you, Father God, for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. We say yes, Lord, to your will. We say yes, Lord, to your word. And we say yes, Lord, to your way, Lord God. Just have your way in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the leadership of Apostle, of, of Apostle Herman Murray, Lord God. Thank you for Lady Danielle. Thank you for First Lady Demas, Father God. Thank you for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Heavenly Father, just have your way in this place. Sweep over our souls in the name of Jesus. Let us come together in unity. We come against any spirit of division. We come against anything that's not like you, Lord God. Show us ourselves through your word on today in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we need you right now. Fill with the Holy Ghost, Father God. Redeem the backslider unto you is our prayer, Lord God. We want to be ready when Jesus come, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to just have your way. In Jesus' name, won't the church say amen? amen. Won't the church say amen again? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Go ahead and pull out your Bible on this morning, your tablet, whatever it may be. We're going to have our scripture reading on this morning from the book of Psalm, the first chapter. Amen. From our brother on this morning, the book of Psalm, the first chapter, one through three. Come on. Come on, my brother. morning. As he said, we're going to come from chapter Psalms chapter 1, 1 through 3. I'll read the first, congregation the second, and we'll all read the third together. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Congregation, All together, and he shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Thank you. you believe anything you do will prosper? Amen. Hallelujah. I shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Look at somebody and tell them to say, stay next to the water. Stay rooted by the water. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is that living water. How many believe it on this morning? Y'all look too quiet right now. It's too many of y'all in this place. We're going to try this one more time. Somebody shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Is anybody ready to praise God on this morning? What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? You look like you're smiling while you're saying it. You like calling on the name of Jesus? Do you? Let me hear you. Anybody going to have him out? Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Jesus. Jesus, I never forget what you done. Come on, put those hands together. Jesus, I, I never, never forget, forget how you set me free. Jesus, I never forget how you brought me out. Lord, I never forget. No, never. Jesus, I never forget when what I you've done for me. How 
you brought me out with your mighty outstretched hand. You broke the bonds of sin and you set me free. You gave me joy and peace and the victory. Oh, Jesus, I never forget what you somebody and tell a neighbor I'll never forget where the Lord has brought me from how he set me free hallelujah we were talking about it even in Sunday school how it's so easy for us to forget where we came from we forget how God delivered us one day even like the Bible said have you become have you started off in the uh, 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 started off in the spirit now you become perfect through the flesh oh no look at somebody and tell a neighbor the power of God changed my life Everything I know has been by the power of God. Who I am has been by the power of God. I am saved by the power of God. I've been delivered by the power of God. I've been changed by the power of God. I've been renewed by the power of God. Hallelujah. You look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm never going to forget. Think about the cross for a moment. Think about the cross for a moment. Think about how he hung, bled, and died for all of us, for you, for me. We were wretched, undone, filthy, and nasty on our way to hell. But he thought enough about you. He thought enough about me to die for me, to die for you, the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross for you. He endured the cross for me. And I won't forget. Lift those hands and say, Lord, help me not to forget. Help me not to forget what you have done for me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we take it for granted. Sometimes we, we become complacent. Sometimes we just get caught up in ourselves, even in coming to church. We come and we just come casual, not saying that everybody's going to praise God the same way. Everybody is different, but we must enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I don't want to ever forget what he's done for me. Look at somebody, encourage them, neighbor. Don't you forget? 
Don't you forget what the Lord has done for you. Don't you forget how good he's been to you. Hello, somebody. I don't know like you know. Hallelujah. And you don't know how I know how the Lord has been good to me. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, the Lord has been good to me. Oh, in spite of me, in spite of me, sometimes the Lord has been good to me. And he's worth all the praise. He's worth all the glory. And he's worth all the honor. Put those hands together for Elder Adrian out here on this morning. We thank God for the man of God. Didn't we enjoy him last Sunday? Like we enjoy him every time he come. Amen. We thank God for him. and We thank God for Deke. Amen out there. The Deacon A.J. Autry. Hallelujah. We thank God for our brothers and sisters. And come on, put those hands together. For our brothers and sisters, the one we can see and the ones we can't see. Put those hands together for our leader, Apostle Murray. Thank God for Lady Danielle Murray. First Lady Demas. Now put those hands together for Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns. You may be seated at this time. Hallelujah. Good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time with our brothers and sisters. Amen. We all are on the battlefield fighting for our Lord. Hallelujah. And on this morning, we want to hear uh, uh, one or two good testimonies. Amen. A testimony that will build faith on this morning. We want to call, I'm going to call my, 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 my sister-in-law if she don't mind. If she don't mind, you want to or you don't want to? Come on, let's give her a hand if she come at this time. Because I know she always come up here and testify to the goodness of God with that Holy Ghost fire. Well, praise the Lord, saints. Lord. I do give honor to God who's the head of my life, to our Apostle and First Lady Danielle Mary, to First Lady Demons and all the saints, to the Speaker of the Hour, and to all the saints of God. I just praise and magnify God for coming to my life, saving me. That's my testimony. That's the best t testimony that I have, that God came into my life when I was wretched and undone, suffered from deep depression, and God came into my life, and he saved me and made my life worth living. And I just ask all the saints of God just to pray for me. We thank God for that testimony. And I tell you, God has brought her a mighty long way. Hallelujah. I tell you, one time... You know, she she was uh she still tend to be a little shy, but I tell you one thing about it, Amen. She's on fire for the Lord. She know the word too, Amen. Don't get it twisted. Just cause she sit back there quiet, she know that word, Amen. And that's how we all supposed to be. We all supposed to know God's word. Anybody been delivered on this morning? Anybody been changed by the power of God on this morning? Hallelujah. Sister Haynes, you mind giving us a testimony? Come on, let's put those hands together for her. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for Sister Haynes wearing those many hats as far as working. I got a mind to live for Jesus. All of my days, I got a mind to live for Jesus. All of my days, God has been so good to me. Oh, I love, I love, I love him because he set my soul. Free, and I got a mind to live for Jesus all of my days. Mountains get high. I live for Jesus. Valleys And I got a mind to live for Jesus. 
I give honor to God, hallelujah, to Apostle Mary, Lady Danielle, praise God, hallelujah, to Elijah, praise God, and his family, and uh, Brother Banks, praise God, I praise and I magnify God. Woo! Haya, y'all are both Hey, God, because I have a mind to live for Jesus all of my days, praise God. The mountains may get high, woo, but I live for Jesus. And the valleys may get low, but I'm going to live for Jesus because I got a mind. It takes a mind to want to live for Jesus in these last and evil days. God has been so good to me. I don't know about nobody else, hallelujah, but I come out to the house of God to give him the glory. I come out to the house of God to give him the praises because God has been good to me. When I look back over my life, hallelujah, and I see all the wonderful things that God has done for me, I can't help but say thank you God and thank God for saving me I think and I praise God he came into my life one day hallelujah at an early age praise God I used to pray and ask the Lord to wait till I get 60 years old wait till I get old praise God but I think and I praise God God didn't answer that prayer I think and I praise God God came into my life at an early age almost 40 years praise God I've been saved and living for the Lord every day ain't been Sunday hallelujah because there's some things I had to go through. It's some things that God taught me through adversities and trials, praise yeah. God. It was good that I was afflicted. I don't know about nobody else. Hallelujah. But everything God, hallelujah, allowed to happen in my life has made the battle of me, praise God. I'm blessed today because of God. I'm blessed today in my sanctified soul because God has been a keeper to me. And God, hallelujah, is always there. He was there all the time, just like the song said. I'm happy for Jesus yeah. on today. I thank and I praise God for bringing me through sickness, praise on, God. Man. I thank and I praise God through, you know, he blessed me, praise God. When I was going through all these autoimmune disorders, praise God. Oh, yeah. Had my body just messed up. Had my brain all messed up. Couldn't think right, hallelujah. Couldn't walk right, hallelujah. Couldn't even bend over, pick up a piece of paper. I had to think about everything that I'd done. I couldn't even step over the threshold in my front door. I couldn't step down into my garage without thinking about what I should do. Think about it. I had to tell my man. Think, think, think before you do it. Because I was falling down all the time, praise God. You know, my mind was so messed up, praise God, with that autoimmune disorder, praise God, that you know my mind would tell me that I had already turned and I was making, you know, I'm trying to go left. And I had, but I hadn't. Hallelujah. I was still facing this way. Hallelujah. But my mind was telling me I'd already turned. And a lot of times, hallelujah, because I would try. Hallelujah to, you know, the turn, but I was looking this way. I would fall down, praise God. I was falling down all of the time because my judgment was off. Couldn't walk down no stairs, praise God. It may be a long testimony, but I got a reason to praise oh, the Lord. I got a reason to praise the Lord on today. Hallelujah. I couldn't even come down any stairs. Hallelujah. When I get close to the bottom, the bottom of the stairs said, you got one more step, but it was actually would be three. My mind was telling me it was one step, but it would be three steps. So I would take that step, praise God, and fall down on the ground. God is a good God to me. It's went on for a while, hallelujah. So much pain in my body, hallelujah. Pain in my feet, praise God. But I think I praise God I'm delivered on today. I got the victory on today, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can think straight. Hallelujah. I can rock right. I can pick up, been able to pick up a piece of paper, praise God. I couldn't even pick up a little two-year-old child. I didn't have no kind of balance in my body. Wow. A little small baby could have locked me down. Wow. Oh, glory to God. I tell you, I can run on today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can shout on today. I'm grateful to the Lord on today. Through every trial and circumstance. In every situation, people didn't understand. I was trying to explain, hallelujah, what I was going through, but they just couldn't comprehend it. And I couldn't make them understand because I didn't know myself. Hallelujah, instead of walking on flat feet, 
It felt like I was walking on basketballs. So it made me very scary and intimidated because I felt like I was going to fall down all the yeah. time. I would go to the doctors. They couldn't tell me nothing. Finally, I, I met a doctor, and they began to take all this blood. They took so much blood for me trying to find out what was going on. And, I, you know, when they took all the blood and began to test it, that's when they found out that I had this autoimmune disorder. Wow. But glory to God, I'm blessed on today. God has delivered me. Sometimes, sometimes I have a little pain in my feet. I have a little pain in my feet, but it ain't nothing like it was before. I tell you, I was walking so bad, it was just embarrassing to even try to walk. But I prayed, made up in my mind, I was going to come out to church, and through the, the pain, I still would be trying to urge you, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. I, if anybody had needed help, I couldn't have helped them. So I thank God for the sisters that would come down with me in the mornings and in the yeah. church services and help me, praise God. Because if it had been, I thank God. Y'all don't know like I know, oh, hallelujah, yeah. <laughs> what the Lord has done for me. I think about when Pastor Lee was here in El Audrey the other week, and all them people People got in the prayer line, my God. If that had been a few months ago, they would have just been on their own. But I think and I praise God. He gave me the strength, praise God. Anybody glad about Jesus? Anybody glad about Jesus this morning? Has God ever done anything for you on today? God is a healer on today. He's a way maker. He's a keeper. I got so many testimonies. We take up all the morning service. But we want to move on because we want to hear from Ella Autry on today. But I'm glad about it. I'm glad about the Lord that delivered my soul. I'm glad about the Lord that delivered my body. I'm glad about the Lord that delivered my mind. I'm glad about the Lord that lives in my heart. And I ask the praying ones to remember me in prayer. Come on and put those hands together for that testimony, both testimonies of what the Lord will do. We thank God for those testimonies, and we testify what? Because what? Testimonies build faith. You never know what you may need in these testimonies. Amen. You may not be having balancing issues right now, but as I've learned from the elder saints, just keep saying good morning. <laughs> just keep saying good morning amen and you may get there one day come on and put those hands together for the lord for those testimonies we're getting ready to praise god in our giving on this morning certainly we want to the circumstances that come up he'll fix it you got to believe that you see only reason why i'm standing here right this morning is because i believe god i believe god over the illnesses that i have I know he's well able to heal my body if he want to do it right now in this pulpit. I believe he's able to do it. But if he don't do it, I still believe he's able. So I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep on studying. I'm going to keep on fasting. I'm going to keep on seeking God. Because I believe. You see? And when you believe in a thing, you'll act towards it. That's what will happen if you believe. Now, in Hebrews 10, 23, he said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. We shouldn't have no doubt in Jesus of what he said he's going to do because he's faithful. He done proved it over the years, over the thousands of years. God has always proved his faithfulness to his people. But we have a problem uh, proving our faithfulness to him. We should not doubt him, you see. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking to give up. Not forsaking means not to give up or abandon. The assembling ourselves together in the matter of some is, but exhorting one another as so, much, as so much the more as we see this day fast approaching. We got to be aware of the time that we're living in, saints. Every time that God allows us to see another day, Jesus is getting closer to his coming. You see, and we must prepare ourselves for that event, you see, because it's going to happen. You see, if Christ delay his coming and he let us to live, he's coming. If he don't, he's going to come for us individually through death. So either way, he's coming and either way, we got to be prepared. We got to prepare ourselves right now. This is no game. This ain't no game. Uh, this ain't something that we do as a habit. This is a way of life. 
we're going to leave this world and we're going to stand before a holy God. And we're going to stand before a holy God in, in holiness or in sin. It all depends on what you do on this side, you see. That's, that's going to, where you're going to spend eternity on the next side. Because you got a never dying spirit in you. That's that life that God put in you. Amen. This body is made from the dust of the earth. So it's going to go back from which it came, to the dust of the earth. Now listen, if it wasn't for that embalming fluid, you'll turn back to dust. Embalming fluid is a preservative. And it'll make that body last, that, 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 that earthly body last for a long time. You pull that person out of the grave 10 years just like you put them, it's just like you had just put them in there. That's what embalming fluid does. But eventually that'll wear out, you see. But that never dying spirit, that spirit that God put in you at the day of creation is going to go back to the creator, you see. And we're going to give an account of how we lived on this side. What have you done for Jesus on this side? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And if you did anything for Jesus, are you continually doing it right now? Because when you stand before God, it don't matter what you did yesterday. It's who you are at this present moment. When you die, if you die, you're going to be judged for who you are now, not for what you did in the past. So if you lived holy for 25 years and at the 26th year you became unholy and you died, you're going to burn. Because what you did for 25 years ain't going to mean nothing. It ain't going to carry on to that day that you lived. You better still be living holy. You got to live this life one day at a time. Moment by moment. Second by second. You got to give it to Jesus. Consistently and constantly. If you're going to enter into that eternal kingdom. It's going to cost you everything to get there. You're going to have to give up some things that you don't want to give up. You're going to have to give up some people. Up to the word of God. Amen. Let's go ahead and get a song. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Asking everyone on, to rest on your feet. Bless that wonderful name As I turn it over to the hands of the man of God, Jesus. Elder Adrian Come Autry. On, Come on and sing the song. Bless that wonderful name. The name of Jesus, there is no other name I know. Well, there's joy in the name, the name of Jesus. There is joy in the name, the name of Jesus. There is joy. 
Come on, y'all. Ain't no harm in praising him. This is the Lord's service. We always have time to praise the Lord. Come on, put those hands together. Y'all ain't looking. <laughs> can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, yes. My God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift those hands toward heaven. Yes, yes. Come on, lift those hands toward heaven this morning. Now, come on, let's give everybody that testified and sang praises to the Lord this morning. Come on, let's give them a great big hand. And amen. Let's reverence and acknowledge and let's give honor to the memory and the legacy of Pastor Demons on today. And let's give it up for Sister Demons. Come on, let's give it up for her. Let's give it up for our leaders, overseers, Apostle Herman L. Mary and Lady Danielle. And last but not least, come on and give Jesus some praise. Y'all better wake up here it's Sunday morning. I didn't say give me a great big hand. And let me tell you what it says. It said we are lively stones in the building. How many lively stones up in here this morning? Ah, oh, that don't sound too lively to me. I said, how many lively stones in the building this morning? And anything dead ought to be what? Buried. And if it is buried, how many know Jesus can resurrect it? Amen. Come on and give who a hand? Jesus some praise up in here. Oh, you better come on here on a Sunday morning. I didn't say give me a great big hand. I said give Jesus some praise. Jesus some praise. Jesus some praise. Y'all catch it after a while. Jesus some praise up in this. Up in this house. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way? Did he let you see the dawning of a brand new day? Well, how many know he's worthy? I don't know about you, but I get joy. I need to say that again to somebody catch it. I get joy. When I think about what is done for me, I was sitting on my seat, Elder. I was sitting on my seat, and I felt like Jeremiah. He said it was just like fire. Don't y'all mess with me this morning. He said it was just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Had me on the edge of my seat. I couldn't hardly be still because it was just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Somebody said, if you can't tell it, let me tell it. What the Lord's done for me. I don't know about you, but the Lord's been good to me. Somebody said, I may not be where I want to be, but thank God I ain't where I used to be. You, be <laughs> you, you better give him some praise. Listen, not only do I have a right to praise him, I got a reason to praise him. I got a right and I got a reason. Woke me up this morning, clothed in my right mind. Got the activities of my limb. Family was doing fine. Thank God for my wife and my son. Amen. Come on, give him a great big hand. 
My mama was doing fine. Brother Adrian doing fine. So listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad. Listen, I don't want to bore your patience today. We have a good word for you today. How many know any word from the Lord is a good word? And as I study these lessons, you know, I never want to bring a lesson to anyone that I can't feel myself. You ever heard a preacher say this, this message, bless my soul. I, I believe, amen, that it should bless the, res, the, the person that's receiving it before he delivers it. It's supposed to, right, Ella? Anywhere in the word of God, you see when he spoke to the prophet, he told them to stand up on their feet. Brother Jesus said, my word is spirit. Sister, he said, my word is spirit and it's life. And as I seek the Lord for sermons or messages, whichever one you want to call them, I want to feel it myself. And I always seek a message that's very simple and plain to understand. That's what preaching is. I don't want anything too deep to where you leave here not fully, not fully understanding what the message was about. So I asked God, well, I don't have to ask him. He deals with me in simplicity to where the word of God is so plain. I was taught that preaching the word of God should be so plain until a child should be able to understand it. And if a child understand it, we should all understand it. The Bible even said that this way, this way of holiness, it said it's so plain that a fool wouldn't error. So that means none of us are going to be without an excuse when it comes to hearing or receiving the word of God. Let's get into the message today. I want to call your attention to St. John's Gospel. St. John's Gospel, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse to the 32nd verse. How many is going to pray for Brother Adrian this morning? St. John 8, 31 through 32, when you have it indicated by saying, Amen. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So, that means they were believers. If, look to your name and say if. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Now based on that concept or based on that statement, a disciple is not one that accepts Christ, but one that follows Christ. Uh-huh. Then said he to those Jews which believed, so they were already believers, which believed on him. He said, if you continue in my word, in other words, there's a continuation. He said, then are you my disciples indeed. 32nd verse said, and ye shall know the truth, and it's the truth shall make you free. Come on, give Jesus a great big hand. The truth shall make you free. The lesson or the message is going to be coming out of that 31st verse when Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed. Look to your neighbor, and I just want you to repeat two words. Basically two words. There are three all together, but two words. Look to your neighbor and say starting and finishing. Now come on, give Jesus a great big hand. Starting and finishing is one thing to start, Ebo, but it's another thing to finish. Jesus said, if you continue in my word. Now, the word continue means to go on or to keep on, to last or endure. And that's a beautiful thing to get saved. Let me say this. Getting saved is the most important thing that you will ever do in your life. And I didn't get one amen. I'm going to say it again. Getting saved, because we need to understand. Getting saved is the most important thing that you will ever do in your life. It's more important than the person you choose to marry. 
is more important than the career that you decide to choose? Is more important than buying a home? Is more important than saving for your retirement? Somebody said only what you do for Christ will last. Now, the Bible said, what will it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Then it said, it is appointed unto a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. So living down here is not the most important thing, even though we place so much emphasis on it. The great apostle Mary preached a message one time, a well-kept body, but a neglected soul. People put so much emphasis on the flesh. We bathe it, we perfume it, cologne it, we dress it up. But when it comes to our soul, many times we neglect that. We need to read the word of God. We need to study the word of God. The Bible said that they searched the scriptures to see if such things were so. They didn't just take the preacher's word. They went home and they searched the scriptures daily to see if such things were so. Then 2 Timothy 2 and 15 said, study to show thyself approval, not the preacher. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Not just the preacher, the believer. If you are saving filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to know how to witness. So study. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Getting saved is the most important thing that you'll ever do. Why? Because we're all going to die. Even though we don't like to talk about it, it is a fact and you shall know the truth. And it's the truth that's going to set you free. Now, I don't believe you should walk around all day thinking about dying. But I think you should think about it. If people thought about dying, they wouldn't be doing so much foolishness. If you realize that you're going to have to give an account to every deed that's done in your body, people wouldn't be living so foolish. And if you understand... That eternity is longer than your lifespan. The average lifespan is three score years and ten, which is 70. And if by reason of strength they be four scores, that's 80. But when you think about eternity, that's without end. So which one is more important, living here or the hereafter? Now, there is eternal life, and there is eternal damnation. The choice is up to you. The Bible said, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Now, we're talking about starting and finishing. Now, how do we start? We start by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1 and 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Ibabo Santo, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That word salvation means deliverance to everyone that believes. Whatever you bound by, and I know many times we call a roll. We talk about alcoholics, drug addicts. But listen, let me say there are some people that are morally good. They need to be saved too. Let me say this, thank God for everybody, because the Bible said, for God so loved the world, and the world entails all, but the doctor needs to be saved. The lawyer needs to be saved. Evo. The judge needs to be saved. This gospel will save anybody that will believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe it in him, when you hear the word of God, you realize that God gave his son to die for your sins and mine. To deliver you so that you may have a right to the tree of life. So that when you die, you can live eternity in heaven with the Lord Jesus. Come on, give Jesus a great big hand. That's the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. Getting saved. But listen, after you get saved, we call that the first step of grace. The second step of grace is receiving the Holy Ghost. And I find this is the problem with so many people. 
They've come by the way of the cross. They've come to the altar. They ask the Lord to forgive them of their sins. But they lack that power. But the Bible said in Acts 1 and 8, ye shall receive power. After, not before, but after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. How many believe the Holy Ghost is real today? I said, how many believe the Holy Ghost is real today? You say, how do you know if you got it? The Bible said ye shall speak in other tongues. Acts 2 and 4, and they speak in other tongues as a spirit. Not as you get the utterance. You know, people, hey amen, they hang around church so long, they learn how to speak in tongues. Somebody say, he's coming on a Honda, but that ain't it. Somebody said, hook him in the side, but that ain't it. You can't make these tongues up. It's as the Spirit of God give the utterance. Come on, give Jesus some praise in here. As the Spirit. Amen. The Bible said he get a Holy Ghost to them that ask for it. Now, before you can receive the Holy Ghost, to be a candidate for the Holy Ghost, you have to first be delivered first. Because the Bible said that he would not pour new wine into an old bottle. That old bottle represents your old life. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And if you ask in faith, the Bible said he get a Holy Ghost to them that ask for it. Ask in faith. Then he said he get a Holy Ghost to them that obey. You obey God by asking for forgiveness of your sins. Asking the Lord to come in and clean you. Say, Lord, set me free. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. Deliver me and set me free. The Bible said, he that cometh to him, he'll in no wise cast out. Then he said, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, God will not refuse. That's the reason why I believe people should be preached under conviction. Amen. You have to know that you broke God's heart. Amen. When you come to the altar, there should be no dry eye confession. Your heart should be broke. Ibabo Santo. Ask the Lord to save you. Fall on the mercy of God. Realize you're just one step away from hell. David said one breath between me and death. One breath. You can take your last breath and go into eternity. You come to God and you throw yourself on the mercy of God. God will save you. Then ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God will empower you with the Holy Ghost. Come on, give Jesus some praise today. I'm moving on. I'm talking about starting and finishing. Then after you receive the power of God, how many know having power without knowledge is a dangerous thing? It's fruitless. So then, after you receive that second step of grace, the Bible let us know we have need of being taught. So many start out without finishing. Paul declared, after receiving the truth and Receiving the power we have need of being taught. St. Matthew's Gospel 11, chapter 28 through 30, verse Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor in a heavy laden. That's a twofold scripture. Those that are tired and heavy laden in sin, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor. Those that are saved, sometimes on this road you get a little tired. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor. He said, I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke up on you. See, there's two yokes. Jesus has a yoke and the devil has a yoke. The Bible said, be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage. So oftentimes people get saved and then they go back. Amen. The Bible said, don't be entangled again. Jesus told the woman that was caught in adultery in eight chapter, he said, go sin no more. When the Lord saved you, God don't save you. The Lord don't save you for you to go back. He saved you to go forward. That's why he gave you the Holy Ghost. He don't want you going back. But let me say this. In order to finish, you got to have a mind to be kept. Having a made-up mind is half the battle. Now, I know many times we go through many trials and tribulations until the natural man it seems so hard. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? 
how am I going to do that? How am I going to overcome this? But listen, at the end of the day, and I told you last week, you got to cast your cares upon him. When you know it's too big for you, there's nothing else for you to do but cast your cares upon him. Come unto me, all ye that are laboring heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Now, Jesus said, my yoke is easy. Now, the way of a transgressor is hard. So don't let the devil fool you. Say, well, man, it's getting rough. I may as well go back. That's just like hopping out the skillet into the fire. You, you think it's hot in the skillet? Well, hop out the skillet and hop in the fire and see what, how much hotter that is. Listen, you can't do better going back. Now, think about it. You, you can't do better going back. You do better staying with the Lord. Amen. Come on, give him a great big hand. Because you know what? Many of the afflictions are the righteous. But I love that promise on the end. But out of them all, the Lord will deliver. Listen, where you at right now is not your final destination. You just passing through. That's why they call it going through. You going through. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? I'm going through. That's right. Didn't say you came to a stop. You going through. So where you at is not your final destination. Many of the affliction are the righteous, but out of them all, the Lord will deliver. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We that are on this Christian journey, we are in the race. So many start out without finishing. Paul declared in Galatians 5 and 7, ye did run well. Who hindered you that you should not obey the truth? You did. We're talking about starting and finishing. You did run well. You were doing good. But you listened to somebody. Who did? Then he asked the question, what should separate me from the love of God? Then he said, who shall separate me? Amen. There will be things that will come up in your life to try to separate you from the love of God. But you have to have the testimony that he had. But listen, nothing should separate me from the love of God. Come on, give Jesus a great big hand. I will let nothing separate me. You did run well. 1 Corinthians 9 and 24 said it like this. Know ye not that they which run in a race, starting and finishing, Run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. Now notice what it says. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So usually it's the one that runs the fastest or the one that finishes first that gets the prize. Uh-huh. He said, but you run. Now he was talking about a natural race. He said, but you run that you may obtain. Obtain means to prevail. Prevail means to succeed. Now, the thing about a natural race, only one person wins. But in this race, we can all win. (laughs) Y'all to give Jesus some praise. See, see, in a natural race, it's given to the one that's the fastest or the one that finishes first. Uh Uh-huh. But in the spiritual, we can all win. How is that? Because the race is not given to the swift. Y'all not going to help me preach up in here? It's not how you start. The race is not given to the swift. I don't care how fast you're running. Neither the battle to the strong. Oh, I'm stronger than she is. That's okay. How many remember the story about the tortoise and the hare? That tortoise just moseying along. See, it's the consistency. The race is not given to the swift, nor the bow to the strong. But St. Matthew, Jesus came back. I know a lot of times we quote this in one scripture, but it's not in one scripture. It's in two different scriptures. Well, the race is not given to the swift, neither the bow to the strong, but he that didn't do it to the end. That's not what it said. It said time and chance happening to them all. Meaning you're not the only one going through what you're going through. Save, unsaved. Come on, Sister Cynthia. Give him a great big hand, everybody. 
You're not the only one. Devil try to make you feel like you the only. You ain't the only one. Quit having a pity party and get yourself up from there and be like David. If don't nobody encourage you, you encourage yourself in the Lord. Y'all better help me preach up in here. You better pat yourself on the back and say, you're doing a good job. Tell yourself, keep on keeping on. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Jesus come back in St. Matthew 24 and 13, but he that endured to the end. I feel like I need to tune up right there. But he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. In order to finish, in my conclusion, in order to finish, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. Y'all better help me. I said, in order to finish, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. And the prize is not people. I said, the prize is not people. Hebrews 12 and 2 in my conclusion. Looking unto Jesus. Listen, it's one thing to start. But it's another thing to finish. The Bible says, he that has begun a good work in you will also perform it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a firm believer that when the Lord saved you, he saved you for you to go all the way. Look to your neighbor and say, ain't no backsliding in me. You need to say it now. Now, I want you to say it this time with some conviction. Say, ain't no backsliding in me. The devil's eyes may shine, his teeth may grip, but this soul of mine, he's not going to get. Say, ain't no backsliding up in here. Huh? Say, my mind is made up. Say, my heart is fixed. Yeah, looking unto Jesus, the author and the what? The finisher. Starting and finishing. We got to keep our eyes on the prize. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the prize. That's why we go when we don't feel like it. That's why we go when we misunderstood. That's why we go when we talked about. That's why we go when we have money. That's why we go when we don't have money. When we have food, when we don't have food, when we have friends, when we don't have friends. When we up, when we down, when we level. That's why we keep going because we got our eyes on the prize. Looking unto Jesus, Ibabo Santo, the author, he's the one that started this. He's the one writing this book. And let me let you in on a, on a secret. This story has a happy ending. Yeah, he's the author. This story has a happy, you know, and they say, and they live happily ever after. That's us, y'all. When you start and you finish, and they live happily ever after. Somebody said, well, I, it, that, that's not my story right now. I ain't talking about right now. I said, keep your eyes on the prize. I'm talking about when we get over there. When we go to a place where the wicked should cease from troubling. And where the weary shall be at rest. That's the place I'm talking about. The author and finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was said before him. How many know the joy of the Lord is our strength? Now listen, you can lose a lot of things. But look to your name and says, one thing you don't ever want to lose. Don't you lose your joy. I, I, I feel like I need to tell. Because see, don't, don't be sitting up in church looking like a prune or a raisin. Now, <laughs> What is a prune? Anybody know what a prune is? It's a dried plum. You know what a raisin is? It's a dried grape. Don't you be sitting up in church looking dry. You'll catch it after a while. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I ain't going to be sitting around looking like I've been sucking on a sour lemon or an unripe persimmon. Listen for the joy that was set before you. You better have some joy up in here. Enter these gates with thanksgiving, and you better enter these courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto him and bless his name, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher, 
of our faith who for the joy it's that joy that you want you lose a lot of things you may lose some friends along this way but you better not lose your joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength and if you ain't got no joy you know what you need to do start leaping for some joy up in here I said start leaping for some joy up in here who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Endured the cross, and you crying about what? And he endured the cross, despising the shame. Oh, they embarrass me. Despising the shame. Look to your name and say, you can't embarrass me up out the church. Damn, come on, give me a great big hand. Sit up here talking about somebody embarrass you. You better start and finish despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Come on, give Jesus a great big hand. Stand to your feet today. Starting. Look to your neighbor and say starting and finishing. That's what we want to do. It's one thing to start. It's a beautiful thing.